This video, we're going to talk about the one of the physical properties of how to identify minerals. And this one we're going to be doing today is cleavage. What is cleavage? Cleavage is the word that is described for the tendency for a mineral to break or fracture along a plane of atomic weakness. And so that means that if I were to smash it, it's going to constantly um, break in the same shape. And that would be cleavage. And so there are um, six main cleavages that we're going to be studying today. And we're going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and show you what each of them are. Now, um, here I have an artboard that tells you the same thing. And these are the different types and you will, and you, and I will have the, had that for you guys to look at as a reference sheet on your canvas page. So, um, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead and move the chalkboard. And these are the different types of cleavages that are found. And so we have, and so uh, first of all, before I even begin this, I want you guys to understand that where a rock or a mineral has had cleavage, light will bounce off, reflect off of it. See, like here, like here. It's a plane where, where light, you can see the actual light bounce back, okay? And so it's in the it's in the it's in the geometric shape that we will be identifying some of these um, cleavage planes. And so the very first one is going to be one direction cleavage. That means uh, that this mineral here only has one plane where light bounces off. Right here, it's dull. Here, it's dull. Here, it's dull, and so on. Now, you see how the light bounces off this plane? If I were to put this here, in the bottom is the same exact plane, right? One's just the top of the mineral, one's just the bottom. So you would expect light to bounce off this plane as well. It's the same plane, okay? And so that would be a one directional plane of cleavage, okay? So the next one we have is two directional. That means that light is bouncing off two, two different uh, faces in two different directions uh, and they're at 90 degrees. So they would be at right angles to each other, okay? So take a look at this mineral here. You can see that the light is bouncing off this one. And then if you look 90 degrees from that, you can see that light is bouncing off this one. Do you guys see that? One, two. But then you turn it to the third plane and there's not light bouncing off, is there? It's dull. And I'll take it to the other side and you can see that it's also dull. Right, so this plane and the plane that both my hands are on are the same plane and they should both shine and they should reflect back light as is this plane and this plane is the same one. And then it's this one and this one that is dull, see? And so that would be two directions at 90 degrees. So then we have two directions not at 90 degrees. So any other angle, whether it's 120 degrees, 60 degrees, whatever, if they, if you have two directions where you have two planes of light, reflected light, but they're not at 90 degrees, this is what you get. So here's your first plane. You can see the light bouncing off. And then you can see this next plane. And it looks kind of 90 degrees when you're looking at it, like, at it from that angle. But if I were to turn it like that, you can see that this reflected plane and this reflected plane are actually in the shape of a house roof. And that's greater than 90 degrees. So you can see that that plane has light, that plane has light. This one is very dull, as is this side, as is this side. So the only difference between this one and this one, and, and this one is that this one's at 90, this one is not at 90. Okay, I'm gonna set these over here. Then you're gonna have three directions of cleavage, which would be a perfect cube, right? If it was at 90 degrees, because even though, a cube has one, two, three sides, but it has six different faces. One, two, three, four, five, six. But each two of the faces are the same direction. Does that make sense? So if you have a mineral that has three directions of cleavage at 90 degrees, then if you have a cube, every single one of these crystal faces should light up, right? This is plane one. This is plane two. And this is plane three. So this would be a cubic mineral or in the shape of a cube. 
What if you were to have a mineral that was three directions of cleavage, not at 90 degrees? I, this will take you back to when you took geometry. Remember the rhombus? <laughs> this is a rhombus. And this one also has, let me move this over, three directions of cleavage. You see how light bounces off every single one? But if you take a look, it's a little wonky. You see here, that's greater than 90 degrees. You see here, that is less than 90 degrees. So we call this a 60, that's about 60 degrees. And this is about 120 degrees in, in, when it comes to the angle. And so uh, this is called a 6120 cleavage angle. And so this one would be three not at 90 degrees. Okay, let's go ahead and move these back here again. And finally, what if you have four directions of cleavage and it doesn't matter what angle they're in because by the time you get four directions, you're gonna have, you're gonna have something that looks like this. And this is a dodecahedron. And so you have one, two, three, four faces up here and four faces down here. But if you look, this face and this face are the same plane, as is this face and this face, this face and this face, and so on. And so if you look at it in the light, all four, all four planes light up on, at the top and at the bottom. And so this would be considered four, a cle a four directions, four directional cleavage. And so if you were to look at this, this mineral that has the single, the single one direction cleavage, um, we would call that a mica. That would be, uh, and if you want, if you want a particular name for it, biotype is the name. Is, is the name. Biotype. <laughs> Let me make sure I can spell that correctly. So um, another word to describe one direction of cleavage is called basal. Because, and the reason why they call it that is because it's at the base. It's all you do is, and if you watch, if you, if you, let me see if I can do this with my fingertips. If I were to cut this, if, if they, if all of these samples, they break off in little tiny flakes, see? And then, and that's, that's, the, that's the only place you're gonna have a plane of atomic weakness is in little, little flakes, and that's basal. So then you have two direction, two direction at 90 degrees, and that would be called blocky cleavage. And a good one on that one would be like a feldspar. And we'll talk about this more as we go into mineral names. Okay? And so then we have the two that are not at 90 degrees, right? And I like to call this, I like to call this either 60, 120, or prismatic. Okay? And a good, one, a good example of that would be a home blend. That's the name of the mineral, okay? Then you have three directions at 90. And we call that obviously cubic. And so halite, which is that, which is that mineral you're looking at, is a, is a fancy word for salt. And I'm gonna, sh I, you probably, if you haven't seen it yet, or I will be showing a video where you can see that this giant block of salt or halite and you can see, we'll look at it under a microscope and you, it'll be part of your lab assignment question. And then we have three directions, not at 90. And so remember that word romb rhombus? This is kind of bigger, rhombohedral. That is the name of this cleavage, rhombohedral, okay? And a good mineral for that is calcite. And then finally, we have the four direction. Octahedral cleavage. And that would be a fluoride. Now, what I wanna do next is I wanna show you guys what exactly I mean when I say that if you break a plane of cleavage, a plane, a breaking at a plane of atomic weakness, so I'm gonna put on my fancy eye protection and here you see some some of these same rhombuses these rhombohedral shaped minerals now 
Everybody needs to take a, close their eyes and I'm gonna smash it. And you see how when I smash it, all the pieces still break down into, no matter how big, no matter how small, look at these itty bitty shapes. They all break down into this rhombus because the shape of the rhombus is the plane, is the plane of weakness for this, this particular mineral. Okay, looks like there's some, uh, there might be some gold in there. Ooh, <laughs> the blue is an indicator that there might be copper ore or gold. See how no matter how many times I hit it, I still get the rhombus. And so that applies with all minerals that have a distinct cleavage plane. And then finally, I'm gonna talk about one, one final thing. And as we, as, we, as we travel farther into the mineral section of our lab, you'll know that one of the most common minerals on the planet, quartz, doesn't actually have a cleavage. Um, when when uh, quartz breaks, it doesn't, it, because it's, its bond, atomic bond is so strong, it doesn't really um, have a cleavage plane. And so what happens is, have you ever seen a Coke bottle, a broken Coke bottle, where it has that kind, like, kind of like clam shape uh, break or fracture that you see in the mineral, it's, um, in, I mean, I'm sorry, in the Coke bottle itself, kind of looks like this. That's called conchoidal fracturing. And you'll see that with quartz because it doesn't have a plane of weakness. And so this quartz actually doesn't cleave. Quartz actually fractures. And I will spell that out right now. It's called fracture. And that's it for cleavage.